Welcome to the Toka Backstage Podcast. Join Toka's Executive Director, Chris Wolf, in conversations with the artists and people behind the scenes of the Torrance Cultural Arts Foundation's performances and events. Hi, this is Chris Wolf with another edition of Toka Backstage. It is my extreme pleasure to have Oshin McDiamata and Katrina Sherlock from, uh, actually, they're called, they're zooming in from Ireland uh, to talk about the upcoming Irish Christmas in America coming on uh, Friday, December 2nd at 8 p.m. at the Armstrong Theater. Thank you both for, for uh, joining me. This I guess it's morning for me, evening for you. What yeah, it's great it? to be here, Chris. Um, it's uh, evening time here in Ireland, just uh, around six o'clock in the evening. So it's getting a bit dark, but fire's on, keeping cozy. Nice, nice. So I'm curious, um, obviously in the States, Christmas has like its own set of traditions. Do you guys have, a, like, what is your favorite Irish Christmas tradition? Well, one that kind of springs to mind for myself um, and my mom and I were actually just talking about it today is making um, the Christmas cake in the run up to Christmas. It has to be made weeks in advance so that it is time to set. Um, so we were just discussing that they're making the, the Christmas cake, getting all the fruit ready. Um, so that will be done now soon over the next few days. Christmas cake, that sounds so what what is what is a christmas cake involved is is it dried fruit or yes um loads of dried fruit um cherries sultans um orange peel um a bit of bit of whiskey i think is thrown in there as well for good measure of course um and then closer to christmas time once it's um set we'll decorate it with um marzipan and icing so that that's my job I, I do the decorating. <laughs> that that sounds amazing. How about you, Oshi? Oh, well, it's um, making me hungry. Listen to Katrina talking about the Christmas cake because, um, yeah, food is a huge part of it, uh, Chris. We, you know, we, I, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because, uh, you know, back in the past, you know, food was a big thing for people to spend a lot, a lot of the year. Um, you know, trying to trying to keep in food, and a lot of people had their own animals, or particularly in Ireland, a lot of uh, you know, a lot of rural parts where food wasn't necessarily that plenty. But we we go to town at Christmas time, and a huge focus is is the various different foods. Some of it's sweet, some of it's savoury, um, but definitely um, the theme of 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 indulgence and maybe overindulgence uh, creeps creeps into. But I love the Christmas cake, just like. Uh, Katrina is talking about, but I think the what might just pip it for me is the Christmas pudding, which is mm -hmm. similar, similar, you know, um, those mix of the, the fruits, the dried fruits, and the um, the alcohol as well, and um, even a little bit of cream, uh, or, or, or brandy sauce or something like that to put, to put over it. So rich, these foods are, are rich, they're not for the faint hearted, but <laughs> we have many years of practice, thank goodness. Well, I, I think that goes for any place. I mean, in, here in, in the States, it's it's all about, I mean, food is obviously a big part of it too. Um, but it, do you, now forgive my ignorance, is there like a, is there a, a, is Santa Claus big in Ireland? I know he's big in Germany, but anyone? Do you wait for, for gifts from Santa Claus? Yeah, um, plenty of memories of um, waiting for Santa Claus, the, the run up to Christmas, writing the letter, leaving out the carrots for Rudolph. And uh, now we didn't leave out, um, we left out milk and cookies, I think, as far as I remember. Um, but yeah, there was always the hype. In, in the house myself and my brother writing our Santa letters and sometimes receiving a letter back as well. <laughs> and and Oshina, are you teaching your your wonderful son about the values of, of Santa and being good? Well that's uh, it's a great great reminder, you know, maybe maybe he'll be good. Maybe he'll start behaving himself now when he starts learning about Santa Claus. 
It's um, he's start he's start, starting to. This will be his first Christmas now, where he'll actually be able to to get into some of those things. But yeah, just to go back to your question, there the Santa Claus is absolutely massive, massive um, here in Ireland. You'll hear about him and see him, uh, and um, you know, un unfortunately, the weather can be bad around Christmas time in Ireland. We don't get a lot of clear skies, so it can be hard to see him up in the up in the sky. You know, but um. He, he usually does arrive for those of us that be, behave ourselves during the year, as you know. Lovely. So uh, I'm curious, uh, we've obviously had the pleasure of bringing Irish Christmas in America a couple of times in the past. We always love it. It's a great, great way to kick off the holiday season. What was the, and in the past, we've had another vocalist. How did you and Katrina um, meet up and what was the emphasis to bring her on board? Yeah, well, this is this is super exciting um, for for me because and for all of us in the uh, in Irish Christmas in America because it's our first year to have the the pleasure of having uh, Katrina with us. And, uh, a number of vocalists over the year we've been over the years we've been blessed to have uh, so many wonderful um, singers uh, with us and um, you know that was one of the things that that. Um, you know, was very was a big thing for me at the start because I was playing with a band where, you know, we we had a I suppose a fixed member membership in in the band. So the Christmas tour was always a lovely opportunity for me to to get to to play and to collaborate with with other people that I might necessarily uh, collaborate with. I used to be able to say the word collaborate with uh, during the year. So this is my first time to to hear. Uh, to perform with Katrina, actually, so super exciting. And I'm thinking back to the first, the very first time I heard uh, Katrina uh, perform was actually when she was uh, doing a project with uh, a band member of my my own uh, in Tada, Sean McElwain. Um, Katrina participated on an album uh, that Sean did many years ago, and they won an award down in Cork. So that, that was my first time uh, to hear Katrina. But I've been following her, uh, you know. Uh, over the last um, few years, and she's making absolutely great waves in, in singing in Ireland. And she's just back from Spain, I think. Katrina, is that, is that right? You were singing, singing out in Spain? Yes, um, I was taking part in this fantastic um, festival. It's called Creative Connections. It's in Sitges. So the weather was spectacular, the music even more so. And just, um, it, it was based more so around traditional music, but we also had um, participation from the locals, the Catalan locals. So it was just great vibes, great um, opportunity to just hear other cultures and bounce off each other in, you know, the performance aspect. And and Katrina, how did you, what was your start in, in the music? I mean, I've, I've heard obviously some of the, um, I went online and saw some of your, your recordings and you had, the voice of an angel how did you discover your your talent thanks so much chris um i don't know whether i'd say discover but uh apparently i just wouldn't stop singing around the house when i was young and my parents found this ad in the newspaper that said singing lessons they didn't know what genre they didn't know if I'd take to it or not, but they sent me off anyway to these singing lessons and it turned out to be traditional singing. And that was just the beginning that I just took to it. I loved every moment of it and stuck with it. There's something about the stories and the way the tradition was passed down from generation to generation that I just, it, it, it resonated with me. I am... Um, I just love the sharing of the stories. I, I think of myself more so as a storyteller rather than a singer sometimes because I just immerse myself in the story or the character's journey that I'm, you know, sharing with the audience. And and I Oshin, the 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 most of the I guess all the music in, in the show is really more traditionally based. Is that um I mean, obviously, you don't do rock around the Christmas tree or anything like that. But is it was that like intentional? And it actually is there like more modern Christmas songs from Ireland. 
Yeah, I suppose like you you draw like I have to draw a distinction maybe between the instrumental music and the song um, song tradition because of course the the, be- the beauty of songs like Katrina has been talking about is the story, the narrative aspect, the thematic aspect. Uh, playing instrumental music, which is what I do myself, allows to exist in this difficult to pin down uh, world. You know where the, the tunes can mean whatever they want to mean to you. Now, in in saying that, you know a lot of people that have written tunes over the years have put a little bit of thought into the tune titles, and you could get a sense of 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 where that tune has emerged from, whether that be um, inspired by a particular person or place. Uh, or a theme um, and then others just seem like they were just whatever the first thought came into the composer's head but they're more, more interested in the melody and the uh, title was an after thought so um, I think the song tradition is a very big part of this particular of the themes and in recent years that may be a reflection of of, of, of some of the, the, the singers that we worked with in, in recent time we've we branched out into more of a mix of some of the uh, the songs associated with an Irish Christmas here and more of the inter- internationally well-known Christmas songs. So we've been uh, doing a blend a, a blend of those in the show. And I think that's lovely too, because when we started off, it was all Irish. And, and sometimes the songs were always in the Irish language, which I dearly love myself. But at the same time, um, you know, when people are coming out to see Christmas show and often with younger members of the family it's nice to nice to give them a mix of the familiar and to to expand their 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 their, their vision as well of, of of some new material so that's hopefully what we what we try to do awesome and and Katrina you said uh, you it was uh it was more traditional songs how would you categorize traditional Irish music um I mean, they are kind of are, um, engraved in our history. So traditional singing itself, um, it's all kind of the the stories of past. And I mean, you can associate it with present times as well. Um, it's kind of where where do you sit within the story? But um, they're stories of love, loss, emigration is a strong theme um, in the songs that I learned growing up. And uh, um, they would have just been sung at like Kayleys and house visits and sessions. Um, so to me, like traditional singing, again, is is our roots. Um, but I, uh, I, lo- I love the, the Irish ballads as well because <laughs> they're quite catchy. But um, uh, I was going to say, do you do you I just out of curiosity, when when you're not singing, what what music do you listen to? Um, <laughs> I'm a massive Taylor Swift fan. <laughs> oh, massive good, Taylor awesome. Swift fan. Um, so I listen to a lot of Taylor Swift. Um, I listen to a lot of Celtic Woman as well. I think they're fantastic. Um, and who else? I can't think off the top of my head, but Taylor Swift mostly. <laughs> How about you, Oshin? What's what's your go to for for listening pleasure? Um, well, I suppose I, I work full time with traditional Irish music, so I'm submerged uh, in, in it for you know for many many decades, and I I love it. But um, you know you need to get away from the music that you play as well sometimes. So my my default is jazz. That's what I listen to all the time. Um, and if you, if you come to visit me here, Chris, you'll you'll hear jazz coming out of the 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 ceiling. <laughs> Well, maybe we'll have to pipe in some Taylor Swift too. Uh, um, so, uh, one of the things that we always do is uh, one of the things this organization does is we, besides present amazing shows like yours, is we also encourage uh, young artists and try to help uh, help them find their voice. I'm curious, um, uh, Katrina, what what words of wisdom do you have to young performers who come to you and say, "I want to be a singer. What should I do?" I'd say just trust in yourself, first of all, and believe in yourself, because I went through many years of not believing that I could do it and kind of holding myself back, firstly. Um, There was never any pressure put on me by my parents or anything to do any particular thing. But 
um just believe in yourself trust in your craft um a lot of um singers try to be quite like a mirror image of a singer that they they like um but just to have that ability to say I'm going to be me and I'm not going to be a reflection of any other artist um there's there's no pretense there's just you and your voice your true core voice um so I'd say just believe in yourself follow your craft and dream big because you know if you don't dream big who's going to know how you're going to get there you know shoot for the stars well said well said how about you Jean? that was lovely Katrina um you've inspired me um yes you know start now now is the time no matter what age you are start start now and um just just keep at it per- persevere and um find people that that share your love or your interest as well because that's lovely we don't do these things it's, it's not a it's not a solo journey you know we feed off of others as well so cr- try to create or feed into a little community that's always lovely beautiful um i'm curious about uh, the culture of ireland um where music is such an integral part of it it seems i mean from from the logo of the of the harp to um music in, in pubs what what do you think why do you think that is that music is such an integral part of irish being irish i think music is kind of like our heartbeat here um it's what keeps us going it's you know a bit of freedom away from the day when you've had a hard day i think irish people have always kind of found a way to you know release from that uh, it's a celebration um i um music i think just gives people an outlet you know it's well universally it is a great outlet but specifically in ireland i think um the culture has always been a part of who we are you'll walk into any pub there's music playing there's a session going on in the corner you only have to walk down the street at the likes of the fla or the rock this you know it's it's a it's an outlet it's a place where people just get together and find you know people who are the same as them Oshin what do you think yeah, it's, it just seems like something that's been valued um, in, in our cultures. I mean, it's been valued all, all over, um, you know, the all over Europe and, and other countries that, that have surrounded us as well. It's meant a lot, lot to people over the years. And, uh, I, you know, I think those values are, are past. Yeah, I think it helps that Irish people are both social and, and also have a reputation for being very sociable. So, you know, our music, as it happens, is very interlinked with entertainment and social life uh, that's where it comes from and i think that's where it continues to have huge value uh, for people both listeners and um, practitioners themselves and then um, then there's politics as well i mean you know we you know over 100 years ago or you know 100 in the last 100 150 years ago particular in particular we, we, you know we've been trying to stake out our our, our our you know our distinct identity i suppose as we moved away from from being being under British rules, so anything that we had that was unique was very much promoted and 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 packaged and into the sense of Irishness, you know. And that that was mostly mostly a good thing for 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 people, you know. But but uh, I know once you once you get into these things, you know, um, language and culture, you can alienate people as well. And we 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 are conscious of the, of of that as well. I mean, we've many many different and wonderful people living here on on our small island. Uh, of Ireland, but we like to think of the music and culture as something that unites people and, um, you know, uh, is good for people. Well, definitely, I mean, it's definitely uh, um, unique, I mean, because it's like if you listen to, not to pick on country and western music, but if you take country and western music, you, it's like country and western music is the same all over, but uh, Irish traditional music truly is just Irish. I mean, it's not, I mean, you can hear it and say, oh, that that sounds like it's an Irish tune. Am I wrong? No, you're right, you're right. But you know, we, we didn't pluck it out of the sky either. I mean, we, 
we we assimilated influences from all from lots of the wonderful countries that surround us uh, as as well but you're right i mean it's like any distillation process you take in all these lovely ingredients and you make your own uh, off it which is a little bit like like being a singer or a musician you know that's a, a microcosm of all of that well um and so you your tour begin when does your tour begin when do you leave ireland very soon katrina started to pack the suitcase already now <laughs> i have to get ahead of these things or, or else if i'm if i'm not organized well in advance i get i get a bit bit stressed <laughs> Well, because I know you have um, like a show before ours and then you leave almost immediately after the curtain falls to go to another show. Uh, how many how many gigs do you have this this tour? Um, we, we we typically it's the, the exact number has gone out of my mind. I should remember, but it's always in the always in the 20s. I mean, we always do 20 something um, concerts starting on Thanksgiving weekend. And uh, many years we start in California because we we love California. And of course, my wife Samantha is from California, so that's a great link uh, as as well. But um, yeah, we do twenty something shows all over uh, America, and um, in some places like like you, um, I was just speaking with you. We just added a show in in Chicago because the first one is is is, is sold out. So we're we're absolutely blessed with the support. This is a uh, year number seventeen. Uh, off, off the tour and um, you know it's still going great so thanks a million to everybody who's supported us all the years including yourself Chris you've been doing this for 17 years have indeed you don't you, that you look like you're 17 years old how, how do you do that <laughs> it's, it's the Christmas cake and the Christmas pudding that's the secret <laughs> there, you there you go I got I have to try a Christmas cake I I, I, got, I gotta find one I'm sure there's an Irish place out here that'll have one um there's a there's a, a great recipe out there, and I was uh, I was thinking of it when Katrina was listing the ingredients, and uh, w one of the musicians who played played uh, with us quite a few years ago, Tommy Martin, a great piper from from Dublin. Um, I remember he used to list off this great recipe of how to make the Christmas cake, and uh, it's it involved after every ingre ingredient, it involves putting in even more whiskey and more whiskey. <laughs> Used to get a good laugh from the audience. Well, I, again, I'll have to try it. Did um, Did he get to make the cake in the end with all that whiskey? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that that actually reminds me of uh, um, we did another show of yours, Atlantic Steps, some years back, and I was having a conversation with uh, the dancer Brian, um, and he was saying that uh, we were talking about Guinness and how you know it, it actually tastes so much better in ireland and he goes yeah well i have a friend you know who would go out and and he finally cut down his his pints and i said oh really he goes yeah now now he's just down to four or five and i'm like four or five if i had four or five i would be <laughs> like under the table um anyway but it, it i i have to say there's nothing better than a guinness in ireland that was that was one of my treats when I was there with many years ago. Um, shoot, I had another question and it's gone. Um, well, I will just leave it with, you know, we're, we're looking forward to uh, seeing you guys. Thank you so much for taking the time. Um, I do appreciate it. And we will see you on uh, Friday, December 2nd at 8 p.m. for Irish Christmas in America. Thank you. Thank you so much. We can't wait. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for having us on.